I'm Jill Bright, Executive Director of Tawny, and I'm in the Tawny Center in Camden today with Jill Josephs. Jill is a quilter and member of the quilt group Fiberistas. Today we're talking about a project the Fiberistas have recently completed called Landscape. And for this project, members of the group each made slices, or in some cases, sometimes more than one slice, to be part of the final project. So Jill, welcome today. We're standing in front of the slice that you made for this project. Could you describe how you went about deciding what to include in your slice? Okay, the landscape that I chose was one that my daughter has posted. This is my daughter. Um, it's up in the Adirondacks. And um, my son also hikes. And when I showed him this um, slice a couple of weeks ago, she, he said, oh, that's Indian Head. So I was very pleased. It really affirmed that I did a halfway decent job. <laughs> Um, I'm, a, I'm a quilter and a traditional quilter, so I am used to making things symmetrically. When I started out in the sky, I thought I'd do stars and um, clouds and flying geese, and it just wasn't going together, it wasn't doing it for me. Threw that to the side, kept the flying geese, did another sky, that wasn't doing much for me. So I just did random piecing, kept the flying geese and a couple pinwheels to give it a sense of the wind. And I liked it, so it, I went with that one. <laughs> um, I, with the cliff, I wanted to have some kind of perspective so it would look like it was flat rather than upright. And I did some perspective work like this and didn't like any of those color-wise, and that went to the wayside. I found a book that I had, I had gotten at a yard sale, and it's called Optical Illusions, and in it there's, there's a part about um, isometric perspective. So that's what I went with for the bottom of the cliff here, and I got this isometric graph paper, and I, I graphed out, I wanted friendship stars because it represents my daughter and her two friends who were in the process of being 46ers, the friendship stars. And I put them on the cliff like this and really I stretched myself to not have it be so symmetric and made a different cliff there, so. Because you're used to balancing patterns so that they're very, symmetrical in the work you normally do. Yeah, so this was, a, this was a challenge to me to make it not symmetric. I also have a picture of my granddaughter that I would really love. She's not in this place, but I want to put her on the cliff here overlooking the scene, and I made a little doll for her. I'm going to put it on someday, but when I put it on here, her head disappeared into the hillside, so I'd have to make her a blonde or something before I can put her on the cliff. So. Yes, the sun shining <laughs> on her hair. Yes. And you love batiks. Absolutely. Absolutely. They're my favorite to work with. I've got quite a collection, as we've seen before. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, well, the result of this uh, effort on your part is really lovely, and we're very happy to have it here at the Pawnee Center. So thank you for joining us today. In the coming weeks, we're going to be bringing you interviews with other fiberistas talking about their slices in this project.